Have you ever wanted to be James Bond? Well, on this episode of Gadget, we've got a bit of Bond-esque gadget goodness for you with the Zoomback GPS tracker. We'd like to thank our production sponsors, the California Province of the Society of Jesus, and Gateway. and welcome back to Gadget at the Techstop.net. It's a place where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Ballasar. I'm a member of the California province of the Jesuits, with the largest religious order in the Catholic Church, and we're here in Henderson, Nevada, overlooking Las Vegas. Now, before we get into the tech, I want to send a plea out to everyone in internet land to please stop by the home of Gadget on the internet. That's at www.thetechstop.net. If you drop by, not only will you be able to find all of our episodes of Gadget, but you'll be able to see our daily blog, uh, find the articles that are written by myself and my, uh, my authors, my editors, and, and uh, perhaps even tell us what you want to see next on the show. So if you get a chance, and if you're an uber geek, and if you like to laugh, go ahead and stop on by. Let's get on to the tech. Now this week we've got a diminutive gadget, and uh, it's designed to be so. We first saw Zoom back at CES 2008 in January when they were one of a handful of companies that were trying to offer some sort of technology, some sort of service very like this. The idea is simple. Take a GPS tracker, attach it to some sort of cell phone transponder so that it can report its position, and then attach it to a service so that you have the ability to log in and find out exactly where the tracker is at any given time. Now, it's in principle a, a very cool tool and, and something that actually has a lot of invasion of privacy implications. But the question is, does it work or is it just some sort of hacked together piece of tech that might be promising if the service wasn't so klutzy? Well, we've had about a month and a half to play with this and this is what we found. The Zoomback is a relatively small device at 1.7 inches wide, 0.8 inches deep, and 2.8 inches high. It weighs about a fifth of a pound and is constructed of high-impact plastic. The Zoomback is essentially a GPS receiver tied together with a cellular modem. The tracker portion of the device reads data from the GPS satellites to pinpoint the device's location. Then the cell modem transmits that location back to the Zoomback server. Setting up the Zoomback is fairly simple. Every Zoomback has a unique device ID that you enter into the Zoomback website to activate the device. You then select your service choosing either a monthly, biannual, or annual payment plan. You can add several devices to your account if you need more than one Zoomback, a nice option that lets you track all of your Zoombacks from a single login. Once you've set up the Zoomback, you simply attach it to whatever you would like to track. Zoomback sent us the pet model, which includes a color attachment, but there are also advanced and car versions. The base device is the same, but each kit has slightly different accessories. Logging into the Zoomback website will allow you to track your activated device through the locator center. The Zoomback is set up to automatically communicate with the central server every few minutes. This gives you the ability to track the historical location of your device. However, if you click the Find Now button, you can force the Zoomback to communicate with the tracker, finding its present location in real time. One of the cooler features of the service is the user configurable safety zones. You can set up a home address for a particular locator, then set a safety zone around that location. Should the tracker stray out of that safety zone, Zoomback servers can contact you through your email or cell phone. It can also alert you if the battery is running low, or if somebody has powered off the device. In practice, the system was almost seamless. The tracker is pretty much idiot-proof, with only a single button for power and a charging receptacle covered by a silicon gasket. The service kept a constant track on the device, and the safety zone service worked as promised. Not even an abnormal amount of abuse could kill the unit. Battery life is difficult to estimate because our testing found a range of widely varying times. Our longest test time was seven and a half days, the shortest was four. We think this has to do with how hard the Zoomback needs to try to contact the server. Essentially, if the cellular modem detects a low signal, it boosts its own power to complete the transmission. Still. I would guess that with typical usage, you can expect that the device will need to be charged every five to six days. The Zoomback is available now online from the Zoomback website in three versions, ranging from $200 to $250. 
Now, I have to admit, I'm a big fan of technologies like the zoom back. I mean, it, they're cute, they're fantastically useful, and most of all, they, they kind of take together a lot of pieces of technology that we've had, and they make it into something that's even more useful. Now, I do have to say that there's a little bit of a problem if you plan on using the zoom back with a dog or a cat or any sort of animal the size of Dolce here, because as you can see, um, well, if she had this attached to her collar, she really wouldn't be able to move uh, much of anywhere. So, I mean, it, it's really designed for the larger animals, for, you know, dogs and uh, maybe even large fat cats, pigs, horses, cows, uh, anything that you might need to track. Uh, and, of course, there is also the fact that there are some serious privacy implications here, because even though this is targeted towards pets, this is the Zumac pet receiver, um, it can be used to track pretty much anything. So you could put it into a backpack, into a shoe, you could stick it into someone's car, and uh, you'd be able to find out where this tracker is and accordingly the person or thing that it's attached to at any time, day or night. That could be illegal in some spots, so you may want to check with your local LE to see if this is going to cause a problem for you. Now, that being said, Zoomback also offers several different devices. This is their pet unit, but they have a car unit and they have a personal unit. The difference would be the fact that uh, those other units in include some accessories that might be useful for carrying it on your person or having it in, in your car. For example, the car unit has a mounting unit that will charge it at the same time that it makes sure it gets antenna reception. Now, after playing with this for a while, I have to say that I like having it, but I'm not sure if I want to pay the $200 for the device, or $250 if I get the car device, and then the $9.99 to $14.99 a month. I mean, for, for people who are actually going to use it all the time, if they have a pet that they want to track, or if they have a car that they want to keep tabs on, then absolutely, that is worth it. That's a very small price to pay. But if you're like me and you're just looking to hold on to some very cool gadgetry, this might not be for you. I mean, having to pay $14.99, because I'm paying on the monthly, for a service that I may or may not use isn't really practical. Now, if uh, those concerns don't bother you, and if you do have a use for the Zoomback that's legal, then I might suggest that you check out their website at www.zoomback.com. This could be something that uh, just fulfills your uber geek bond dreams. That's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. If you want to find out more about the Zoomback or any of the other gadgets that we've reviewed on the show, you can always go to our website at www.thetechstop.net. If you want to write us, you can reach us at gadget at thetechstop.net. Well, I've been your host, Father Robert Ballasare. This has been Henderson, Nevada. And remember, there's no Uber geek without you. Have you ever wanted to feel like James Bond? On this episode of Gadget, we've got the Yeah, okay. Let's try that again.